Today we are diving into a topic that's often underestimated when printing with PLA, part cooling. While PLA is considered an easy material, some printers can start to sweat under pressure. Or to put it more accurately, they reach the limits. Especially smaller print heads or compact machines often lack one key element, a powerful part cooling setup. But don't worry, that's exactly what we are going to look at today. We will take a closer look at different types of fans, compare them using real world print objects and show you how better part cooling can visibly improve your print quality. When printing PLA, part cooling is essential. Unlike ABS or ASA, where too much cooling can actually cause problems, PLA needs a solid airflow to maintain clean, crisp layer adhesion. Without it, you will start to see bumps, blobs and fuzzy edges on your prints. Cooling is handled by small fans inside your print head, but not all fans are created equal. We'll brought along a few examples today that you will find commonly in many printers. On compact machines, you will often see 30 by 10 millimeter radial fans. Medium sized tool heads tend to use 40 by 10 or 40 by 20 fans. And uh, most DIY setups rely on the popular 5015 fan. This one right here on the far left, it delivers decent performance, but even that fan hits its limits when you're pushing it on high flow rates or fast print speeds. To make the difference really visible, I will be using my Voron 0.2 for this video, a super compact Core XY printer running a mini stealth burner as the printhead. Inside are 3210 radial fans, which are significantly less powerful than the larger ones we've just mentioned. And that's exactly what we're going to put to the test. We're kicking off the first test setup. As mentioned, we are using the mini stealth burner on the Voron 0.2, equipped with those small 3210 radial fans, and now it's time to push. So how do you test something like this properly? We've picked a specific model inside of Orca Slicer, and as always, you find the link down in the video description below. Um, this object is perfect for checking how well your part cooling performs at different layer times. In case you're wondering, how do I even set the layer time? Uh, it's simple. Just go to filament settings and then to cooling and there you can define your minimum layer time. Make sure to disable the option slow down if layer time is below minimum. Otherwise the slicer will simply ignore your set minimum layer time and slow down the print speed instead. That's exactly not what we want for this test. Once you've done that, you can head into the slicer preview and there you will clearly see that the minimum layer time is now being respected. With these settings in place, we've run three test prints, uh, each with a different layer time. And let me tell you, the results speak for themselves. The first run, with three seconds of layer time, the object looks great, up to about 50 degree overhang. Uh, layer staking is clean, contours are crisp, but after 50 degrees, you can tell that the part cooling starts to struggle. Layers begin to blur together and the surface becomes uneven. It gets even more obvious on the spiral section as soon as the retract test kicks in and the layer time drops, visible artifacts appear. On the second run, two second layer time. Um, this time issues show up much earlier. You start to see artifacts already at around 20 degrees of overhang. The bridging is weaker and the spiral structure starts to fall apart. The cooling just isn't strong enough to solidify each layer cleanly. Our third run, with no minimum layer time at all, now we are going to full speed. And the results were pretty rough. From 20 degrees onwards, the quality drops off fast. By the time you hit 70 to 80 degrees, there are barely any structures left. Layers are laid down chaotically with little to no bonding. And the spiral, well, yeah, it's a mess. Conclusion, with a standard tool head like the mini self burner and a 3210 radial fan, anything below three seconds of layer time becomes nearly unprintable. That doesn't mean your printer is bad, it just means that the pot cooling becomes the limiting factor. And that's where external cooling comes in. It's a game changer when your stock fan setup just can't keep up. So what does exactly external cooling mean? One good example is the Bamboo Lab printer. It comes with an external part cooling system built right in. The Voron 0.2 on the other hand doesn't, but it's perfectly suited for an upgrade. If you take a look at the left and right sides of the frame, you will notice there's plenty of space to mount additional cooling fans. 
And that's exactly what we did. For th this test, we went all in and installed two massive 132 radial fans, one on each side, instead of the usual 50-15s. This gives the maximum cooling performance that's physically possible on such a small printer. And the best part? These external fans don't just cool the area around the nozzle like your standard tool hand fan does, but provide consistent airflow across the entire print, even after the print head has moved on. Tool head mounted fans can only cool efficiently a few centimeters before and after the nozzle. Anything beyond that range gets little to no airflow, especially at higher speeds. External part cooling, on the other hand, stays statically aligned, ideally pointed right at the top layer and delivers even uninterrupted cooling, no matter where the nozzle is moving. And that makes all the difference when printing fast or working with smaller layout times. All right, let's talk setup. Because just mounting the fans isn't enough, you will need to configure them properly. First, let's head over the clipper configuration. Here's what you need to know. The original part cooling fan is the tool head and is now defined as fan underline generic fan zero. The external fans should be assigned as fan two. Uh, there's a detailed guide available here. If you need any help, find the link as always down in the description below. In our setup, we are using what's called a multi-pin configuration because uh, we are running two external fans at the same time. Idea simple, you define both pin numbers where your fans are connected and the multi-pin command allows both fans to be controlled together via the fan 2. But it's not just in Clipper, you will also need to adjust a few things in Orca Slicer. Go to your printer profile settings and check the box labeled auxiliary part cooling fan. Then under filament settings, go to cooling, scroll down to the auxiliary fan section and set your desired fan speed. For this test, uh, we set it to 100% to unleash the full cooling performance. <laughs> now that everything is set up, I've repeated the same three test runs as before. Test number one, with three seconds of layer time, the print results is significantly better than before. The spiral is almost completely artifact free. Only around 50 degrees of overhang do we start seeing very minor imperfections, but nevertheless, just really impressive. Things only get shaky again after 80 degrees. Test number two, with uh, two seconds of layer time, here slightly defects start showing up at around 40 degrees. Up to near the top of the spiral, you can spot some bits. I'd say by 70 degrees, we are reaching the limit of what's acceptable. Test number three, with zero seconds of layer time, this is pure speed here, no regard of layer cooling, and it shows the spiral develops obvious defects and layer adhesion becomes inconsistent. Starting at 40 degrees, quality drops fast, and by 70 to 80 degrees, the result is no longer viable. Adding external part cooling to a smaller printer like the Voron 0.2 makes a huge difference. You will be able to print faster and still maintain solid print quality, but even with powerful fans, once you drop below two seconds per layer, things still are challenging. And I know what you're probably thinking, okay, but what does that look like on a Banshee? Well, let's find out. We've printed two Banshees, one with and one without external part cooling. The clearly show the difference after disabled layer time and push the printer to its maximum speed and acceleration. Here's the context. On the Warren 0 0.2, we printed most layers at 600 millimeters per second with an acceleration of 15,000 millimeters per square second. The outer wall was printed a bit slower at 5,000 millimeter per square second to get a nicer surface finish. And yes, even with input shaping enabled, you can still spot the first signs of ghosting simply because of how lightweight the frame is. The first test, Benchy without external cooling. This gets interesting quite fast. At the bow of the boat, you can clearly see the cooling just isn't enough. Lower layers don't cool down before the next one is laid, so the hot plastic gets squished onto still soft material. The result? Bulging layers that stretch up toward the middle of the banshee. Once the footprint increases and there's more time for cooling, the print stabilizes again. You can also see it at the top of the banshee, especially the chimney. Because of the surface area is so small, the layers are printed almost instantly with zero pores, leading to a melted, unstable structure. 
The second test, Banshee with external cooling. Now, this is a completely different picture. At the bow, the layer lines are crisp but even, transitions are smooth, and the surface looks far better. That's because the extra airflow allows each layer to cool completely before the next one starts. This is exactly how it's supposed to be. That said, even the best external cooling has its limits. At the very top of the Banshee, near the chimney, the layer time is still too short and even strong airflow can't fully cool the part between passes. The plastic just doesn't have enough time to set before the next layer hits. On the third test, Benji with external cooling and 1.5 seconds of layer time, now we've hit the sweet spot. External part cooling is enabled and also set a fixed layer time of 1.5 seconds that gives each layer just enough time to solidify and the cooling system has enough time to do its job. Result? A fantastically clean Benji, even up top near the chimney, no blobs, no melt, no bulging. Cooling alone isn't enough. It's the combination of fan performance and slicer parameters that makes the difference. Without a minimum layer time, even the strongest fans can only do so much. But if you tune both together, even a small printer like the Voron 0.2 can produce amazing results even at high speeds. So what's the final verdict? If you're printing PLA, you absolutely need strong pot cooling. The mini stealth burner just isn't designed for it. It shines more in ABS or ASA prints, especially thanks to the enclosed environment. But if you still want to print PLA fast with that setup, external part cooling is the way to go. The big advantage? You don't have to replace your entire tool head, which is especially helpful on Core XY machines. Bigger cooling fans add weight and that directly impact print quality and the speed. With an external setup, your print head stays compact and the airflow comes from the sides where there's room to go big. External fans are easier to install if your bed moves on the C-axis. That way, the airflow always stays aligned with the top layer. If you're using a flying gantry, it's a bit trickier since you will need to mount your fans to the gantry itself and make sure they stay aimed at the active print area. We hope this video helped you understand how important part cooling is, especially when you're printing PLA at higher speeds. You saw just how quickly artifacts appear when cooling isn't enough and how big the improvement can be when it is. Now it's your turn. Do you use external cooling on your printer? What fan size do you have on your tool head? 30 10s, 50 15s or something even bigger? Let us know in the comments. We'll really love to hear what you've done with your setups. And if you want to try it yourself, the same test model we've used is linked in the video description down below. Print it, show your results and let us know how your machine handles high speed layers. If you can't get enough of 3D printing, then don't miss out this video where we show you small tweaks in Oka Slicer and how they can have a huge impact. Or if you're into giant DIY machines, check out our video on the Venture XL, currently the biggest Core XY self-built on the channel. So thanks for watching and as always, happy printing.